So now we know a little bit more about our high resolution timer here. How many clock ticks are we getting per second? And then query performance counter actually gives us the current value of that register on the CPU that's storing the counts, uh, the number of counts that have gone by. So I want to use the combination of these two to measure how long does it take to write something out to QDebug, which eventually goes to the console in the default case. And we're just, just going to do a simple sample measurement there before we actually make a clock class that we can use in our, in our game. So let's do that. I'm going to say large integer start time large integer end time and this should hopefully be straightforward. We're going to start our stopwatch. Time's going to go by. In the middle of that we're going to send hello out to QDebug. Then we're going to end it and then that'll give us the number of clock ticks that passed. If I subtract the end time or the start time from the end time that's going to give us the number of clock ticks that happened between when we started and ended giving us Roughly, how many clock ticks did it take to print hello there? So let's do that. I'm going to say uh, query performance counter. Put the current count into start time. And then here I'm going to say QDebug. QDebug. Hello. And in order to make sure that builds, let's pound include. QT slash QDebug. Again, I'm just playing here. I'm going to delete all this code later once once we've learned a few things. Now, query performance counter. Address of end time. Okay, so I have this point right here, our start time. I have this point right here, our end time. Now, to get this distance here, I just need to subtract them. So, large integer delta is what I'll call it. And we, we often think of delta or, or change in time or change in position. That's probably why Delta Airlines calls itself Delta Airlines. They're changing your position as time changes. Who knows? But delta, let's do delta dot quad part. If you remember the quad part, we don't, we're not going to mess around with this high part and low part. We're going to get straight to the quad part here, which is this long long, which is Microsoft's int64. So the quad part gets the end time, our end point dot quad part minus our start time dot quad part. And I'm curious, I'm going to hit a 5 That's going to attach to the debugger, slow it down a little bit more. But I'm just, let's, let's see, uh, let's see what we got here. So we queried, we queried, we did the delta, and it looks like it took one, four, three, three. And I'm guessing that's 1.4 megahertz because we saw in the previous video that that I'm not getting as granular as a billion, but granular up to a million. So roughly 1.43. That's a lot of time in a CPU's lifetime. That's a lot of time. So anyway, that's kind of interesting. How many how many seconds is that though? And it's not going to be a full second, so it's going to be parts of a second. So let's see if we can figure out how many seconds that is. Well, to find out how many seconds that is, I have to take this this short amount of time and divide it by how much time is actually in a second. So let's say these are the number of clock ticks in a second. So if I divide this small number by this larger number, that's going to give us, uh, it's, it's basically a fraction or a ratio. Here, look, you know, I've pretty much drawn it here. Here's our fraction. Here's the top part of the fraction. Here's the bottom of the part of the fraction. Okay, that's probably a lame example. If I divide, that'll give us the number of seconds. So Let's let's do let's do that. And remember, these are ints, all right? These quad parts are ints. We're gonna have to go to floats to get a to get a floating point type. So let's say float uh, delta seconds, maybe. I don't know. Gets. Let's do a cast here. Float uh, delta dot quad part divided by our clock frequency. Clock frequency dot quad part. I don't have to cast this sign to a float because the compiler is smart enough to say, hey, we're dividing a float by an int. I need to convert this to a float as well. So here we go. Let's F5 this and see what we get. Delta seconds. Okay. That's pretty, that's that's a small chunk of a second for sure. That's very, that's much gran more granular than uh, dealing with thousandths of, thousandths 
of a second. All right, I'll take that. So that's pretty good. Anyway, this is roughly the idea we're going to use to do our our clock class. And I could right now do a sequence of several videos on timing and profiling and all that. I just want to get a basic clock class going so we can figure out what our frame time is, get our ship moving according to that frame time. And then also I want to be able to measure the current frames per second. I think that's that's nice to display that and be able to use that. So that's what we're going to do in the next videos. We're going to take these concepts. I'm going to delete this code out of main and go back to where we were. But I'm going to take these concepts and do that in the next video.